Thanks for staying with us. Ahead of World Site Day 2024, which holds on the 10th of October 2024, it is crucial that we understand the importance of the event. This year's theme focuses the world's attention on the importance of eye care in young people and inspiring children everywhere to love their eyes. The importance of eye health cannot be overemphasized, and it is in this light that we have our guest join us today to discuss on the importance of this year's theme. We have Dr. Sarah Adeyinka Odedoye, CEO Aurora Vision Consult. Dr. Sarah, uh, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Okay. Um, we understand you are an optometrist and there's always this confusion. Let's get it, let's get it out of the way. There's always this confusion who is uh, an optometrist or a ophthalmologist or an optician. Let's get that out of the way. Let's know what your own uh, function is in that chain of eye care. Okay. An optometrist is your primary eye care practitioner. When we say primary eye care, that's your first point of call. The optician, the ophthalmologist, and the optometrist, they all work together as, an, as a team. Now, the optometrist is the first person you meet when you have eye issues. You go to the clinic, you meet your optometrist, and then your optometrist examines the eyes. If it's a refractive error, he does refraction and other tests. And when you have a prescription, you, you, the next point of call is to give that prescription to an optician who now gets the lenses and cuts them into the frame. So the opticians are like the technicians that do the cutting of lenses into frames. Mm. Now the ophthalmologist, in cases where you have um, serious eye conditions that may require surgery or that might also um, have other med um, systemic you know, related to some other systemic um, issues, you refer to an ophthalmologist. Okay. So the ophthalmologist takes it from there. So the ophthalmologists are the secondary care, eye care practitioner in the team. Okay. The primary eye care is the optometrist, while the ophthalmologists are the secondary eye care practitioners. Yeah, we all just know that. So we all eye have doctor. functions. <laughs> I doctor, now we know, we don't know any other thing, but now, now we can see the difference. Okay, uh, let's discuss the theme, the theme for this year's um, uh, celebration or the marking of this uh, World Eye Care Day. Uh, what is the theme and what informed uh, the choosing of that theme? Okay, for the past four years, um, the International Agency Prevention of Blindness as, as well as the WHO um, we've been running concerning the world side, they've been running with the team, Love Your Eyes, mm. you know, and it's, it's a team that we, we have pushed forward to help people get more awareness about the issues around eye health, especially in the world that we are in right now. Um, and last year, we focused on workers, the need for um, people to begin, employers of labor to begin to um, make um, efforts in ensuring that their workers are safe because of the use of these digital devices. Now we have realized that children are also affected and many times they don't have a voice. So this year's focus is on children. We're trying to sensitize the community, society, parents, teachers, and every guardian to know that these children are the future of our nation. And so we need to ensure that their eye health is taken care of. There are many, many, many um, things that happen to children that could have been prevented if um, addressed early or if, you know, avoided. You know, there are many things that have been happening with children and many times the children don't have a voice to speak for themselves. And that's why this year, our focus is on children. Are you targeting children for this awareness or more the, children, the, the parents? We are targeting both the children and the parents. How are you doing that? Because 
in in terms of um, the children, we are we are having talks. We're going to be having lots of talks in the schools on the assembly ground on our um, on the tenth of October. Different um, groups will be going to different schools to have talks with these children. One of the leading causes of um, um, vision impairment amongst children is corneal injuries and or this many times are caused due to trauma and things like that you know so children need to also be aware they have a responsibility to protect their eyes not you know hygiene and things like that these are things that children can also do for themselves so we also need to teach them and we're also going to be training the teachers to enlightening the teachers to um and the parents, the people that take care of these children, so that they can also pass, continue to pass that information to the children. Now, in terms of the parents, like I said, apart from the children, we are also reaching out to schools and um, reaching out to PTAs and also giving out um, this talk concerning um, children eye health. And that way we also let parents know that there's no um, you know parents have this belief that the child is too young to wear glasses but you know that there's a there's a period where correction can be done when the child when it, um when the eye is still very young but when you cross that age the the tendency for correction is now very slim so it's better the child starts the correction early even if you don't want the child to wear glasses you know forever but if they there's need to wear glasses let that child wear glasses so these are some of the there's so many so many beliefs that mindsets that people have about you know eye issues and because of that they avoid it and these children tend to suffer the consequences later in life in, in, so that's what beyond we're beyond the tent of october beyond the 10th of october because it's that that's just one day how do you intend to carry out this orientation this not orientation this awareness campaign because when you talk to the secondary school there are only so many that you can cover for that one day or even one week so how do you intend to carry out this awareness campaign beyond 10th of october as as a clinic aurora ik is actually not restricting our own sensitization to this um world site day because actually um as our plans for 2025 we're going to be having vision screenings in our community and this is just the beginning this is just to you know sensitize everyone and so from time to time we'll be having vision screenings you know from the time when um there was covid and everyone was indoors there has been a spike in the increase of um refractive errors amongst children and this has a lot to do with um the lifestyle changes that happened during that period children are now uh, more focused on near activities near tax you know screen usage and all of that and this has also caused an increase in refractive errors so one of the things we are trying to do to help because um we as we are very very much interested in preventing vision loss generally and so what one of the things we are trying to do is to help screen children that have issues so that they are aware because many times the first step is being aware children the issues we have with children is that children might not be so aware of the fact that something is wrong is the parents that many times or the teachers that many times will say oh i notice this child is always doing this when he's trying to you know the child might not be so self-aware and so we need to help by ensuring that we you know discover these cases on time so we are trying to push for early um, early detection by doing vision screenings in our community and this is not just going to be restricted to the 10th of october no okay. it's going to it's going to be a process that's going to last even up until 2025. Okay, in your experience in your clinic, for instance, you may not be able to talk for other cl clinics. How often do you see children come to a clinic uh, to report eye eye cases or yeah cases with their eyes? And um, uh, if the number is good enough, kudos. But if the number is not good enough, what are the things that you think are preventing them from coming to report these uh, eye defects that they have? 
Uh, well, if, uh, for me, like you said, in my own clinic, one of the reasons why we took up this initiative was the fact that we, we realized that um, in terms of our numbers, we don't have so many children come in. So we decided to go out and screen these children. Now, the, one of the things that causes this is the fact that parents don't believe their children. You know, parents believe these children, they're just playing. Maybe somebody in their class is wearing glasses. And so you come home and say, Mommy, I cannot see the body. You know, parents really do not believe their children. That's the fact. You know, many times until they have a confirmation from somebody else, probably like the teacher, or they see it beginning to affect the grades of this child. That's when sometimes they begin to take things seriously or when it is so obvious that this child you know cannot see or cannot do some certain tasks you don't need to wait for that that point you know every child should have had their first eye check by the time they are five you don't need to wait for the child to complain of anything once they are five years old they should have their eyes checked whether they have complaints or not because there's a period when the eye is growing the eye begins growth right in the womb but does not finish its growing you know when the child is born it continues to grow and so if there's any issue with the eye and you allow that child to grow that way you will now have issues that you know probably will have you begin to have difficulty in correcting later on that could have been corrected but if that child had been brought to the clinic and discover oh there's this there's a little this there's a little that and correction is made and the child's eyes grow perfectly okay so you, that's the reason you why just reminded me of something so now that we're talking about correction and all that uh you said something about the eye still growing and i was just curious does the eye have a lifespan a lifespan when you say lifespan what do you mean by last lifespan? yeah because it's just like okay it has grown to a particular point it will stop growing and when it gets to a particular a period uh, it will start deteriorating um, so I, I don't know whether okay. yes um the the eye actually continues to grow until about 20 years of age and usually when the when the individual gets to like 40 there's an aging process that you know begins to take place okay. and that's when we start losing accommodation by the time the person is like 60 some other age related generations might start setting in and okay. all of that okay so, um yeah so now now that we're concentrating on the on the children uh, apart from sometimes well, the accidents that they have sometimes because of the screen time that they have which is uh, a lot too much and all that affecting their eyes are there other nutritional deficiencies that parents for instance should be mindful of when they're thinking about the the health of their children's eyes yes yes it starts from the mother when the mother is pregnant the mother should eat balanced diet vitamin a deficiency is one of the things that causes um, issues with children um, and causes blindness. So the mother should make sure she has balanced diets, rich in all the vitamins and minerals that you know, the body needs so that the eye can grow very well from the womb. Now, when the child comes in, you, um, fortunately, our government has known there was a time when um, blindness caused by vitamin A deficiency was, you know, was the most prevalent amongst children in Nigeria. But um, our primary health centers and our hospitals, the, um, the government mobilized and they now give all these um, vaccinations and supplements and all of that. And we have, we don't have that much anymore. So vitamin A deficiency is one major thing that can cause, but generally, every child should have balanced diets every child should be given balanced diets such that you won't have any reason to have any of all those um, abnormalities and all of that especially babies mm. balanced diet a lot of people will just, will just be thinking of amala and and a redu and that's all that's balanced diet uh, we don't even really give uh, much thought to what constitutes a balanced diet and all we just think about what makes your tummy fill up 
and that is all. That's balanced diet for us in Nigeria. I think we should be doing more uh, awareness on what constitutes a balanced diet so that people will begin to know it's not how much you eat, but how well you eat. Uh, I'm just curious as we are wrapping up, uh, is there any form of collaboration between uh, the association of uh, uh, eye specialists and maybe the governor, government and all that? Uh, what kind of collaboration do you have at this point? The association of eye specialists and government is there any collaboration or there's none there, there is there is a collaboration um we have in Lagos state we have the prevention of uh, blindness that um, is responsible for working together to ensure that um there is a low prevalence of blindness in Lagos states working with the health centers and with the other clinics but concerning this um, World Sight Day, the Nigerian Optometrist Association is actually taking this campaign to the grassroots. So we are not doing anything. We are doing things in our local governments, working with the local governments, working with um, the schools, such that we can reach out directly to these children and their parents. That's what we are doing for this World Sight Day. Okay, um, we'd like to get your final words uh, as we wrap up. Uh, what do you have to say to Nigerians, to the children? Just a final word uh, as a summary uh, to the people watching us now. Okay, one thing I would like to say here is that good vision for children is very, very important. It not just affects their learning ability, it affects their esteem, it affects their social development, it affects so many things about them. Then look at the future, it affects their capacity in future, if not addressed properly now. There have been cases where children have injuries that were not addressed properly and it led to blindness. There are cases where parents just without information put all manner of things into the child's eye in terms of um, traditional medication and all of that and the eye is very delicate so we need to be extremely careful with our children we need to be extremely careful with our children and so one thing i would like to say is please parents seek professional help when it comes to your children do not use quacks do not use you no know, trial and error. They say, they say, you know, I use this, I use that. No, eye drops are not all the same. Eye drops are not all the same. There was a case of a woman that I would say she blinded her baby by putting an eye drop that she shouldn't have given a baby of that age. Hmm. And really, there was nothing so, so wrong with that child. And because somebody else had used that eye drop for a red eye, she used it on the child and they destroyed the cornea of that child. So please, parents, let's be careful with our children. These are, you know, they are gifts that God has given us to steward. And so let's ensure that we give the best attention to them. Seek professional advice, especially when it, when it concerns your children. Seek professional advice. Do not just, you know, go away. Then okay. please... One of the things that you know leads to blindness in children is uncorrected refractive error and can lead to amblyopia when we talk about amblyopia the fact that the eye becomes um virtually useless we say um, lazy eye okay due, due to disuse mm. so if you decide to let that child wait till the child is older just because you feel that child is no longer is not um is too young to wear glasses or something like that what you're doing is you're destroying that child's eyes okay. and that's not the best so please parents let's do better thank okay. you very much okay thank you so much um you will be doing your part we also will be doing our part i know that uh, the media also will have a critical role to play when sensitizing people on critical issues, especially when it comes to eyes. I would like to thank you, Doctor, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, that was Dr. Sarah Adeinka Odedo, an optometrist.
yeah, optometrist with over 15 years of work experience. She is also the CEO of Aurora Vision Consult. And she was our guest today talking about World Sight Day coming up on the 10th of uh, uh, October 2024. Take care of your eyes because they are the windows to the world. Okay, this is how we wrap it up on the show this morning. We'd like to thank you for being with us to this moment. And we pray that you are going to join us again tomorrow for another edition of The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Bye for now.